After living in Japan for three years, I decided to finish off my time there by cycling the length of the country from Cape Soya in the north of Hokkaido to Cape Sada, the south point of Kyushu. After posting four videos of the trip, many people have been asking me questions about cycling in Japan, which is why I've decided to put together this video where I list my tips for cycling in Japan and try to answer the most common questions I've received. Hokkaido is my favourite place that I cycled in. I spent five weeks there, but if I had time I would have doubled that. While some people fly into Sapporo with their bikes, you could also take the ferry, which is what I did. Japan is extremely hot and humid during the summer months, except for Hokkaido, which is why you'll find many cyclists and bikers making their way north for summer. My favourite parts were the national parks, Rishiri and Rebun, Shiritoko, and Daisetsuzan. The nature across the whole of Hokkaido is amazing, you'll definitely see plenty of wildlife, maybe even a brown bear if you're lucky. If you need route advice or other information about this area, I highly recommend 14degrees.org, which is a bunch of recommended routes and other information about cycling in Hokkaido. Japan is a great place for a cycle trip because you can take most of the costs of accommodation by camping. There are many free campsites and if you're too far from these it's usually okay to stay in a park or at a Michinoeki or a roadside station as long as you pack up early in the next morning. For a list of free campsites there's a page called Free Camping in Hot Springs Japan with a layover for Google Maps which was extremely useful to me. Paid campsites are hit or miss and can be as cheap as 100 yen or up to 2000 yen per night so definitely do your research before staying in a paid campsite. Campsites in Japan usually don't have hot or even cold chars, which makes tip 3 even more important. Onsen, or hot springs, are a big part of Japanese culture, and they are a great way to finish the day when doing a bike trip in Japan, especially because it's rare for campsites to have showers. The map I mentioned above lists the free ones, but you can also do a Google search to find paid onsen. Different searches sometimes work better than others, but I usually search in Japanese for onsen or sento. Japanese islands are great and I've visited quite a few during my time in Japan. My favourite were Rishiri and Reibun in the north of Hokkaido and Oki Islands which are part of Shimano. I cycled from July to December and through all types of weather. There were a few storms I cycled and camped through, two typhoons when I had to find a hostel or internet cafe, and the coldest I camped in was minus one degrees in Hokkaido in October. Some of these experiences are among my best memories of the trip, and you just have to do your best to enjoy it at the time. Having good waterproof panniers and warm clothes and a sleeping bag will help with this. When you're cycling, you have to eat about twice as much as you normally would, so a big part of your budget will be food. Luckily, the food in Japan is amazing. Every region of Japan seems to be famous for a different kind of food, so search online or ask locals about the region you're in. In order to save money, try to get to the supermarkets near closing time for good deals, but definitely budget enough to eat in restaurants during your trip. Convenience stores can be a little expensive, but are extremely useful on a bike trip. You'll find them everywhere in Japan, and they're mostly 24 hour have hot food, alcohol, sometimes free Wi-Fi, and a ridiculous amount of other useful things you could need. 7-Eleven and Lawson are the best for free Wi-Fi, but Family Mart also works sometimes. In Hokkaido, I loved stopping at Seiko Mart, the popular convenience store there, for their 100 yen pasta. I would often eat breakfast at the campsite, pack up, then stop at Seiko Mart for two or sometimes three of their pasta. 
The only time during my trip when I wasn't enjoying cycling was on Route 1 from Tokyo to Nagoya. Busy roads, trucks, traffic lights and cycling through urban areas just aren't fun. I wanted to make up time and took this route thinking it wouldn't be that bad, but I wouldn't do it again. It's much better to get into the countryside and see the beautiful nature and wildlife, even if it means cycling over high mountain passes. Looking back, these will be the best memories from your trip. So as I mentioned earlier, Hokkaido is my favourite, but a close second would be the Sanin coast from Totori to Shimonoseki. The coast is beautiful, the roads are reasonably quiet, locals are friendly and it's easy to find places to camp. Very few foreign tourists seem to visit this region, but there are many great places to visit along the way. If you go this way, I highly recommend climbing Mount Mitoku in Totori Prefecture. Totori city also has the most famous sand dunes in Japan which are worth a visit. They are a great place to watch the sunset and there's a free campsite just beside it. My best option was the Google Maps layover which I mentioned earlier, but when none of these were in my region I first searched Google for maps for camping, campsite or campajo and checked reviews or websites to see the price. Otherwise I'd search for parks, koen in Japanese or roadside station Michinoeki. On the topic of accommodation we all have those days when we just can't be bothered camping. I've had some success with websites like Couchsurfing and Warm Showers. I've used Airbnb a few times, one to find a hostel to, with a sleeping bag in the lobby for 1,200 yen. I've also used Booking.com to find hostels or capsule hotels, and another reasonable option is internet cafes. I found these by searching Google Maps for internet cafe, or the brand names such as Jiu Kukan or Media Cafe Papa. Yes, although it's technically not allowed, nobody will have a problem if you set up late and leave early the next morning. I've only been moved once, and that was because I was too close to an airport runway, something I didn't realise when I was setting up my tent. For searching routes, I generally used Google Maps and Maps.me. It's not possible to download maps of Japan on Google, so Maps.me was useful when I was not connected to the internet. I find it best to use the driving route when selecting to avoid motorways and toll roads but Google Maps walking route or the maps.me cycling route sometimes give interesting routes, so if you're happy to go off-road and explore a bit more, you can try these. Despite Japan being very tectonically active and having frequent earthquakes and active volcanoes, or the unpredictable weather, typhoons, and the possibility of seeing dangerous animals like snakes, bears and monkeys, I can honestly say that I haven't felt safer anywhere than in Japan. Okay, so I think that covers all my useful knowledge for cycling in Japan, and I hope it convinces some of you to do a bicycle trip there. This will probably be my last video in Japan for a while, because it's time to move on and see another part of the world. From July I will fly to Canada and start a bike trip towards South America. I'd love to make it all the way down to Argentina, but for now I don't have a set plan other than a flight. I'm wanting to try the Great Divide mountain bike route. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel for future videos. And if you haven't seen my other videos about the Japan trip, here's the link to the first one.